Thank you, Mr. President. I move for passage of uh, Senate Bill 120. The matter for the body is passage of Senate Bill 120. Any member seeking recognition for the purpose of question or discussion? I do. Senator from Boone. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm here today to ask for your, for your vote for Senate Bill 120 to preserve real jobs that support real families in my community and yours. Turfway Park has been an important part of my community since 1950. It attracts a variety of people from around the country and close to home. It brings together people. It hosts a Kentucky Derby prep race, which is a premier event on our local social calendar. It creates jobs and many more are planned. I can't imagine, Mr. President and members of this chamber, a Northern Kentucky without Turfway Park. It is so essential to our local economy and to our identity. But beyond the nostalgia and cultural significance of Turfway Park, we are talking about real people who go to work every day, who depend on the backside and on the new Newport racing and gaming facility to make a living. People who will lose their jobs if this bill does not pass. We are talking about 400 permanent jobs and 800 construction jobs that are planned at Turfway Park before the Supreme Court's recent ruling threatening all of this, which shut down the construction on that facility for our community. The Supreme Court said that it wanted this body, the per, Supreme Court said that if this body wanted historical racing to continue, that would, we would have to vote on it. They said a change of definition of pair mutual wagering is to, made, is to be made by us, the duly elected representatives of the people. I've heard these loud instructions, loud and clear, and that's why I filed this bill. I ask each of you to support it. I'm asking you to find a pathway to provide 1,400 jobs that these facilities create. Does this General Assembly, Mr. President, and members of the chamber really want to be known as the body that was responsible for laying off 1,400 employees in the middle of a global pandemic. 1,400 jobs is just the tip of the iceberg. It's estimated that there are 60,000 jobs related to this industry. It's the last 10 years of historical racing in Kentucky which has made this all possible. Let's think about the message this would send to the business community by not passing this bill. For a state that is constantly looking to recruit new business to move here, imagine if we told potential employers, if you come here and seek billions of dollars into the ground, we'll reward you by saying your business is illegal, even after you've been operating legally with a license, paying the rules, and paying thousands of dollars of taxes for the last 10 years. Not only will we lay off employees and for forfeit billions of dollars in exi existing investment, we would also miss out on an estimated $70 million of investments that the racetracks have made in these facilities in good faith. I know that you will hear shortly that this is a constitutional argument, and it is. I have here a timeline with over 100 years of history of the legal battle regarding pair mutual wagering in the state. It goes back to the very founding of our state, Mr. President, in 1891 up until present day. And tradition and law both, contrary to what you'll hear, has always ruled that pair mutual wagering was legal until very recently. What this bill does is simply clarifies the issue once and for all.
So why am I asking you to support Senate Bill 120? I am asking you to define per mutual wagering the Kentucky Revised Statutes have never done. This definition will remain the status quo on pair mutual wagering and continue as it always has for the last 10 years. It merely codifies it. And I want to talk about a few things about what this bill is not. This bill, contrary to what you hear, is not an expansion of gaming. In fact, the case can be made that it, uh, I'm sorry, an expansion of gambling. In fact, the case can be made that it limits it, and I believe that. Because as the opponents of this bill have said, and have criticized it for not being a constitutional amendment, which I voted on years ago in this very chamber, and it failed, a constitutional amendment would open up wide open gambling across the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Historical racing, when it started 10 years ago, I did not take very seriously. But I soon learned, as chairman of the committee which oversees thoroughbred racing in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, that it was a huge, huge success. And it's the perfect fit. It's nuanced to racetracks. It's a game about horses, confined to racetracks and their, and their satellite facilities, and most importantly, infusing needed purse money into our thoroughbred circuit so that our thoroughbred circuit has had a renaissance. We are one of the few states where our thoroughbred industry and our horse industry is expanding, not shrinking, expanding, when all over the United States it's shrinking. And we are the horse capital of the world, Mr. President and members of this committee. I can remember when I was a little boy, I grew up in Loveland, Ohio. I didn't grow up in Kentucky. And I can remember my mother reading to me about the great racehorses in Kentucky when I was a little boy. Whirl Away and Citation, who were raised in the, in the great Calumet Farm in Lexington. And little did I know when I was a little boy on my mother's knee that someday, I'd be chairing the committee that oversaw thoroughbred racing in Kentucky. I was talking to a couple of my friends the other day when we were talking about this because there's been a lot of discussion about it. And I respect people on all sides of this issue because there are different sides to this issue. But I really feel like sometime, Mr. President, it's those of, the, those of us who have come to Kentucky that maybe appreciate this more because we know the tradition and how wonderful it is. It's kind of like the new Christian who's the most fervent. So I ask the members to support this bill.